India is one of the world's highly populated youth country. We have we are one of the world's youngest country. The average age of India is 28. One out of the four young people stay in this country, right? But have you ever thought as in how much, you know, despite having all of this, how much of these governments are actually spending on young people? You know, what is government doing about youth and how do we get engaged in the system? So today the topic politics, power and youth, I want to talk about these points, how we as young people can, you know, uh, participate in governance. Why should we participate in governance and what is our entire role in the entire political system, right? So this is where I want to talk with all of you today. Uh, and last week our budget is out and uh, you know i was going through a lot of reports and interestingly i found this study over the last five years on an average you know how much our government has been contributing to youth or you know spending on youth uh, uh anybody if you want to guess uh the total budget out of the total budget over less than four percent is what today our government is spending on young people out of the entire budget only four percent is coming to the young person and if you cut it down if you if you do a simple math it comes down to a mere six to seven rupees per per young person per day is what our government is spending on young people everybody every politician every government always speaks so high about youth right they all they all speak so high about you telling youth is the future of this country you know what you know youth is the backbone of this country we have to protect our youth we have to invest in our youth but when we actually look down to the numbers it's it's quite disappointing to see only four percent of the total budget coming down to a focused budget coming down to young people while the rest 96 percent is you know it's a overall covered budget though and and today what we want to talk about is how do young people focus in how do young people you know uh, be part of this bigger dialogue how can we all contribute how can we all kind of understand uh, and join this entire thing so i want to break down this topic into three parts politics power and youth what is the real definition of politics you know how did politics became all about power and how we young people can you know reclaim politics and you know do our part in making our country a better place for all of us so this is where uh, i want this uh, i want us i want to discuss and you know have a conversation with all of you did we ever think you know i think did we ever think about this uh, did you ever think why do we have governments why do we need why do we need these netas why should we stop at traffic signals when these netas are moving around why are their lives so important than us why are they so protected than us and more than everything why are we paying for all of this why are we paying for all of their uh, you know uh, activities and i'm sure given a chance most of us doesn't want to pay taxes most of us doesn't want to you know uh, give away money to government because we don't we, we don't see the value coming out of it we are not really happy with how our country is being governed that's why you see a lot of young people so restless about politics so restless about the entire political scenario right so but what are we going to do about it how can we you know how how are we going to think about this how are we going to approach this for the longest time whenever young people want to talk about politics we always said like you know this is not your thing to do you know youth is not supposed to you know get into politics politics is a dirty world you have nothing to do over there politics is meant for few people right but what is the definition of politics did we ever ask ourselves what is the definition of politics we have been using politics from various definitions right but what is the real definition of politics i think the real definition of politics is oh definition is not striped to par uh, the real definition of politics is i think politics is the art of negotiation to attain common good for people and why did we have governments is because you know we're all very busy in our lives like many of us are students many of us are engineers many of us have everything to do it's very tough to decide what we collectively need and everybody wants maximum out of their needs right if, if given a chance i want the road to be right outside my house i want the bus stop right beside my colony i want the metro stop metro train stopping right outside my house right but it's not how it is possible there should be a collective negotiation for the common good of people so we decided that you know what let me elect one person representing all of us because we are too busy in our personal lives and this person is going to go to the lok sabha this person is going to go to the assembly this person is going to go to the council and debate discuss and give me the best possible outcome so that is why we wanted to have more and more and more leaders that's how the that's how netas came into place that's how we elected leaders once we have these leaders these leaders form governments and these governments decided that okay you know what to put down roads to put down you know give you water infrastructure education and to help the lesser privilege we all decided okay they need some kind of a fund and that's when we decided okay you know what out of everything i make i'll give certain amount of money for these people so that they'll make our lives a better place they'll you know create a better ecosystem for all of us to live and that's how we started giving out our money to governments through various ways through direct indirect taxes and you all know it and you saw the budget and how governments are supposed to spend this budget right so this is what we expect out of our 
uh, this is what we expect out of the leaders this is what leaders are ideally supposed to do they are supposed to negotiate for the common good for all of us go to lok sabha go to assemblies go to the councils and debate and discuss and ideate for people to solve their problems but eventually like people were talking about how did politics turn out to be politics turned out to be all about power politics turned out to be all about their parties their leaders their elections winning an election from politics of solving people's problem politics became all about winning an election politics became all about saving the leaders name in the history politics became all about naming projects after the leaders building statues for the leaders at the taxpayers money and i think over a period of time it became the new normal that now for us the definition of politics is not anymore about people or problems but definition of politics is all about power corruption every time somebody uses the word politics it is so much of negative energy that we would get offended if somebody use says oh why are you doing politics oh you know don't do this kind of a, this kind of politics politics is never now used in a context of good and how do we expect politicians to behave good when it's not even used in the context of good right so our expectations on politics and politicians are so low that we don't even have any expectations out of them anymore we 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 feel like we don't belong to this system anymore and that has to change if that has to change we have to question the power the power politics which is kind of the entire problem in the system most of us think you know what uh, this politician is bad that politician is bad then uh, or we we kind of try to see politics from a politician or an individual perspective but i think we have to start seeing politics from an institutional mechanism because i don't really think changing one person would change the system right even now if i am this person who is trying to you know talk all of this you know working for young people working for good politics tomorrow you give me politics you give me the power you give me the position to sit down and none of you question me none of you question the power you give me i would turn to be corrupt because that's the nature of power power turns people corrupt and absolute power turns people absolutely corrupt and today the problem is that we don't often look at how do we challenge the system politics became very personal we all talk about leaders we all became so polarized that we either accept this leader or we completely don't accept this leader and if certain people don't accept certain politicians we become anti nationals right so that has to change that has to really change only when we start questioning ourselves when we get informed citizenship when when more young people engage and contribute to the system so but suddenly what happened is we all started to believe that system is too big to question every time when, when each of us ask ourselves what can we do can we go and question the system we don't strongly believe even if i ask any of you do you think can you change and we think change is too big a thing that none of us can be part of it anymore right if i ask you that you know uh, how, i mean that's a common question i get everywhere uh, when i go and talk they don't we, we stop believing in ourselves we think system is too big that we can't change but if you take a step back and think in the first place who are these politicians how did they end up to be how did they end up to be politicians who sent them there who gave them that power it's all of us it's our oath it's our parents oath it's our it's we who gave them that power it's we who gave them that access to systems access to everything else to be in those positions in the first place so why are we so afraid of them afraid of them or why are we so you know why do we doubt ourselves so much to even question them so i think that's that's what we have to really change today the young people should focus on changing how do we look at the systems and how do we challenge this power so and see uh, don't take me wrong but i would not really question a politician or, or i wouldn't really blame politicians anymore for this because i used to be one of those young people who always think you know politicians are the bad people out there you know pol- pol- politicians are the one who has to change and if good people come into politics things would change dramatically so well but no not really a lot of good people are trying to come into politics but not much is happening because like i said the problem is not with the people the problem is with the system we see it see at it and how do we perceive the system i would like to recall a conversation i had with a very uh, senior politician uh, you know me being a very young aspirant uh, person who wants to change the system and then interacting with this old a uh, six time five time mp uh, we were uh, this was during the 2019 general elections so he has been like any other politician i, I started asking him this question do you really have to pay them 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees at every election to win why don't you just serve them why don't you become and you know win their hearts and be a true leader that they vote for you and he laughed and said a very simple thing shravan see let's put the basics out the most important thing for any politician is to win an election and we would do anything and everything to win an election if people are expecting a 1000 rupee note from us or a mixer or a grinder or a laptop we would give them if they are expecting biryanis and liquor bottles right before the election we'll give them we are all about you know 
supplying it's it's all about demand and supply curve like you know if that's what the demands of the people will supply them why don't people ask about roads tell people to pass a resolution that we are going to only vote basis on the roading or or the education or the healthcare and trust me we will do that and he said i'm not going to be the messiah of politics who's going to change this cycle and break this cycle and try to you know become the new age politician i don't have any incentive to do it any more in my system like for me all is all about survival i want to survive these elections i will do anything and everything people ask me to do and promise me to do so people are asking me for this i'm giving back, i'm giving them this and that actually made me think you know where is this young population where is this young people who always talk about system change about system and uh, where are we engaging in this entire conversation why are we not engaged you know how can we change this and that's when the idea of yogalam came out and we thought you know we have to bring more and more in young people into politics and and even now a lot of people question me how do you think young people joining politics could change anything see i think i would i would like to just state one thing i strongly believe uh, i and i personally want more young people to engage in politics because the second young people start to engage pol- in politics they, they'll understand it and when people can understand it they can feel it and when people feel and understand politics they can change it so that is why we want young people to get into politics you know understand politics i know it's not easy it's not simple it's not going to be a, a it's not going to be very easy for young people to come and join politics and that's where we need institutional frameworks where young people can come and join politics and many of us think you know why would anybody encourage me in politics how can i join politics trust me me i right now i'm on the other side of the political line like one of those young people who thought politics is not at all welcoming for young people and when i came into the system of politics when i started to work with these systems there is a dearth need of young people for every political party today every political party is realizing that they need more and more and more young people because they're not able to connect to an average voter and today more than 40% of the population is below is between the age of 15 to 35 in this country right which is the most voting population and every political party is is really finding it tough especially regional parties are finding it really tough to connect with this youth and they need more young people but the only problem is we as young people doesn't know how to join politics or where to go to join politics and they as grand old parties doesn't really know how to meaningfully engage people in politics and and the entire concept of oh politics should be all about service is not something i believe in politics should be a profession politics should be a a job we should be trying to do politics young people should be trained in politics when i said in politics i'm not talking about the politics of power i'm talking about the politics of solving problems and that should be a full time job as many of your mba graduates engineers you go out and solve a lot of business problems a lot of uh, structural problems a lot of engineering problems and politicians are supposed to do the same thing they're supposed to challenge and solve the day to day problems of a common man a, a common citizen and that's why we need more young people in politics because we understand them more than ever today with a lot of young people coming into politics there's a lot of hope and trust me like right now uh, the average age of our parliament is what half of the average age of the country our, our country is, is is one of the world's youngest country with an average of 28 years and our parliament is 54 year old like the 17th lok sabha is currently 54 years the average age of a leader who makes decision for a 27 year old country is 54 right and this is not, this has not always been the situation if you go back to the history the first parliament the first lok sabha in 1951 is 46 year old the average age of the first lok sabha of this country is just 46 years old and that has been for the longest i think at least for the first five first 20 25 years of indian parliament the average age of this parliament has been less than 50 when the average age of country was around 34 35 the average age of parliament has been 45 46 49 but well, what happened is those who got elected just stayed there and then they just you know the the politics how we saw has completely changed and this can only happen or we can undo this process only by more and more young people coming into politics also let me make this clear when i say young people should get into politics i'm not just talking about contesting elections politics is not all about contesting elections politics is about solving problems there are a lot of other places where young people can do politics and you know contribute to a lot see uh, all of us have i mean the first question we had is system is so big to change but the question really is how many of us have actually tried to change the system how many of us actually tried to get onto the streets do a small part of ourselves to you know qu- to do anything about change but most of us everybody of us have ranted so much about the system have ranted so much about the politics have cursed this politics have cursed everything and we have been so upset with politics but how many of us actually stepped out and did something about it that's the question i want to ask our young people that's where the role of youth comes in challenges power and politics i mean i'm not talking about changing this country most of us have must have debated so much about the union budget which came out a couple of days back right 
I'm sure we have spoken so much about how this budget should have been, how this budget is not so great. And most of you must have fought with your friends who have either support the budget and oppose the budget. And we would have been so frustrated about this budget and go back to a normalcy. See, I don't know if we can really make much difference about the central budget. I, and, or rather, I would have a very simple question for all of you. What does really bother you so much in your day-to-day -day life? The India-Pakistan border issue, which has been there for the last few decades, or if, you, if the municipality doesn't collect your garbage outside your house for the last one week, if the garbage has been not picked out your house for the last one week, is it going to be a bigger issue for you? Or the issue about India-Pakistan border issue or the national union budgets, right? Both of them are equally important. What I'm saying is, which does bother you so much, right? For me personally, it's going to be a municipality problem. And I, I believe it so much is going to be the same for many of you. But the question comes here is how many of us actually spoke about solving this garbage problem outside a house versus solving India Pakistan border issue. Most of us had so many opinions about like just bombing of this country. Like, you know, if we leave our Indian army for half an hour, they'll just clear everything and come back. You know, why is government not taking strict actions? Why is Modi not being so strong? Or why is somebody else not being so strong? We spoke about all of this, but we never spoke about how do we solve the problem outside of garbage. That's, that's where the typical approach I think today we have to change. We, I mean, we became so much of discuss. I mean, we discuss so much about things beyond us, but we don't focus on things right outside us. We all, I mean, even if the garbage is not collected outside your house, it's going to be a CM's mistake. None of us know, like there's a corporator who's going to stay like two, three streets away from my house. And he's the one who should be accountable for this and go and have an interaction with him. Right. For us, politics became so much of a glamour. Like, you know, it's all about leaders. It's all about big people. It's all about chief ministers and MLAs, but it's never about solving problems. I think it should start from us as how do we perceive politics? How do we look at approaching these problems? So coming back to this point, as young people, as all of us who have so much of information, as uh, all I'm saying is, can't we go and visit a government school out in, in your locality or a government hospital in your locality and inspect it? Why would I ask this is because, you know, like I said, uh, how many of you would donate a thousand rupees or 5,000 rupees to me? Okay. I would promise you that, you know what, I'll give you a, I would attend this TED talk and I'm going to charge you thousand rupees, right? And I collect a thousand rupees from all of you. And if I don't turn up for this TED talk, how many of you are going to be silent? Oh, it's okay. Like, you know, this guy is always like this. I'll not care about this. Not really. Right? None of you would do that. Right. At least you would all write on Facebook or write on your social media platform. Oh, this guy is a cheat. Never go to his talks or never pay this guy ever. Right. You would all be vocal about it just for the thousand rupees you pay. But every one of us have been paying thousands and lakhs of taxes every month and which are used to construct our school buildings, our hospitals, but none of us take the ownership of it. Why? So it would be as simple as, you know, going and visiting a government school, visiting a government hospital, just inspecting if the doctors are coming on time or not. It could be every Saturday morning thing. If five of your friends every Saturday morning go to a government school, go to a government hospital and inspect and see right down the problems and you don't need to do anything. You can just tweet it out to the local MLA. You could be a class of 50 people, class of 60 people. Getting your local MLA number is, is, is just a fraction of a thing, right? And if all of you can call him up and say, okay, there's this problem. Can you please solve it? He might not respond the first time, not respond the second day. But every Saturday morning, if he's getting a message from 50 people from his constituency to tackle some problem, would he not still react? At the end of the day, what does a politician need? He wants to win back the elections. He needs all of your votes. He would definitely listen to us. But how many of us are organized? How many of us are focused on, you know, having this patience to approach these problems? That's the real question I want to ask young people. So it's very easy to, you know, point fingers at the system. I'm not telling system is great. I have my concerns with the system. So do you. We all have a concerns with the system. But the only way to solve this is engaging with the system, not, ran not just ranting about it, right? We have to engage with the system. We have to you know, contribute to the system. We have to have a conversation with these leaders. We can't leave it all to them. And I'm not asking to do it because, you know, we're going to change this country and, you know, all with nationalistic fields. I'm, I'm asking to do this because this is our future. This is the cities we're going to live in for the next few decades. This is the cities and country where we want to bring our kids out, where we want to make our kids, you know, live for their lives. I would actually blame my parents and my grandparents for the kind of country they created, for the kind of politics they created, because they have been voting and electing leaders for the last few decades. And I don't want to be accountable for the generations to come and say, you know what, oh, sorry, we fucked it up or we messed it up. You don't do this anymore, right? We want young people, we want, we want to create a system that we are proud of. And for that, the only way is young people should engage in the system. We should take more responsibility because this is all about our future. This is about, this is going to affect our lives on day to day. And that is why we want more and more young people to come and, you know, engage in the system. So, 
So also it's more important to be to be really honest. I don't think it's I'm not asking every young person, not every young person could afford to be very honest, not every young person could afford to be in politics. I think we are very few of those uh, privileged class to sit in these AC rooms, do a Zoom, uh, Zoom TEDx and talk about nation, politics and youth. I mean, we are one of those one person privileged young people who are talking about this because the other 99 percent are struggling to get their education, struggling to get their, um, you know, get employment, get a skill, even have an access to internet, to be very honest, to have an access to a decent internet, right? So it's our responsibility, our privilege is our responsibility to make world a better place for everybody else. So that is why we have to have more and more young people engaging in politics, questioning the status of power and kind of question the stereo and, 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 and make an example as in how politics could be like we have been debating about so, so much. See, uh, why would I want more young people in politics is because history has taught us that what an, what one good leader can do, right? History has taught us what one good, what miraculous change one good leader can bring in. Imagine what if millions of young people come into politics or if millions of young people start talking about these problems. I'm sure this country has millions and millions of problems, but also this country has a billion young population who can solve these problems. And we should engage with systems with all the privilege we have is to make the difference. Because I'm sure uh, we are a force that nobody can stop once we organize ourselves. Once we start to understand, once we can move beyond our barriers of region, religion, caste, affiliations and talk about problems, I think we can shape this conversation. Youth has always played a very big role in Indian political system. We have led movements. We have created mass movements. And today we are seeing the farmers protest. We have saw Nirbhaya rape case protest. We saw India ethnic corruption movements. We have always been the pivot of changing politics so much. And this is the time for us to take a step ahead and become the policy makers who can make those laws and not protest on the streets, but actually spend more quality time on making laws. See, I would like to end this with one small point. I mean, one small question for all ourselves. Who are these leaders who are leading us today? You take any national leader, any state leader, most of them were the student leaders once. If they were doing student politics and becoming leaders who are leading this country today, why would any student unions now or any student leaders now or any student activism now would become a rogue element? Today we have, we have created so much of negativity around youth in politics. While these leaders who are leading us now are all so-called young leaders or so-called student leaders, right? It's important that because the only reason they started removing university elections, the reason there are no more university elections at all, because these young leaders who came out of universities know the potential of what young leaders can do in colleges. How can they question the power and how can they you know, take away the power they have today? And that's why we have seen the systematic breakdown on universities and student politics, especially young politics. So it is important in the interest of the nation, in the interest of our own future, not even in the interest of the country. I'm talking about our own future for a better life for us, for a better life for people around us. It is important that we all organize ourselves and you know keep our keep our differences aside. See, I don't think anybody comes and joins into politics to destroy this country. Not even the politicians right now. Nobody, I, I don't think anybody wants to join politics or telling I want to destroy this country. But once they join politics, there's no enough incentives for them to do anything good. Politics was the system became so tough that surviving became a thing. And if that has to change, if that has to change, we have to you know, join politics. I think there's a very important, I would like to quote this one thing, very important, uh, important quote. I'm sure you all, nobody, you know, nobody wants to see no politician is a bad politician. I think it's the silence of good voters, which turns politicians into bad politicians. And I think today young people should take responsibility of breaking the silence and speak out loud and clear what we want out of the system and ex and increase this set of expectations on what we have in the system. So with this, I would like to end uh, with the same quote uh, they quoted for me. Like, I strongly believe youth is not the future of this country. We are the present. And if you want anything to happen, if you want to make a difference, it is today that we have to take the responsibility and move forward. It cannot, we cannot wait for tomorrow. And I want every young people to every young person to take the responsibility today and get engaged with the system and make a difference. Thank you.